Hello everyone and welcome back to the next iteration of our town's tutorial. Some of the subjects I think I would like to cover today are basically gaining immigrants, gaining heroes, finishing our roof here, and then if we have time I'd like to go over the military commands. So let's get started. I'm going to start the game up and make sure everybody's gathering something. Um, you'll remember that in our last tutorial I set apart these little regions and if you right click them, let me go down to the right layer here. All right, it'll say who owns the room right here. This one belongs to Sedani Gildersleeve. And these are personal rooms. If you go to your civilians tab here, or your citizens tab, and you mouse over anybody, you'll see that they have a number that says happiness. Happiness is determined by the amount of objects they have in their personal room, and by how much idle time they have. If you wanted to look up the specific mathematics behind that, I believe it's posted on the town's forums. I don't know it off the top of my head, but you do want to allow your civilians to have occasional idle time as it does increase their happiness. Now, if we wanted to increase their happiness another way, we could go to the right over here and we could start looking at furniture for the houses. I'm going to check my stock panel here, and I have 29 wood at the moment, so I am going to get going creating some beds for all these people. And I'm going to put the beds in different areas just to give the house a sense of being a little different one from the other. We can't really rotate the set pieces without a mod, and by set pieces I can't put a bed in a house and rotate it to face the direction I want. There is a mod that allows you to do that, and you can find that on the forums as well. But for now we're going to put beds in everyone's houses, because beds affect how long they can go in between their sleep times. If you go to your citizens tab once again, you mouse over, you'll see that you have a number decreasing in the middle. It says turns to eat and turns to sleep. Turns to sleep is refilled more if you have a bed, as turns to eat is filled up more if the food restores more health. I am going to check my stocks really quickly, which is unrelated, make sure we have enough food for me to do this tutorial. We do, so we have plenty of bread on hand, and we do have some other things on hand, and you'll see they're placing beds in here. Now I am going to finish this roof, let me check how much thatch I have. We have 24 grain, or I'm sorry, 24 wheat for thatching, so we're going to go back over to our walls menu, we're going to click on roofs, and we're going to finish this off. And I wasn't really concise about this, but you don't want to place the layers before the previous layers are placed. So you'll remember I placed this one first, leaving the corner out. Once that's placed, you move in one, and you do the same pattern, but you do fill in the corner that time. And you just move inwards like that as they're placed. And once every single layer has been placed, there will be a hole in the corner, and you place that one last and then you should have your first fully successful roof. I am going to continue outfitting these buildings, so let me go ahead and check my wood stocks one more time to make sure that I have enough wood, and our wood has not budged at all, so they are cutting just as quickly as we can use it all up. And I'm going to place some other furniture in this building. I'm going to take, let's see, a cupboard seems nice for some of these people. Some people like cupboards, so we're going to take a cupboard. We're just going to place that in this home. Place cupboards here and there. Some people use them as bookcases, some people see them as cupboards, who knows. And that's going to give us a nice layout. Next, we're going to go ahead and I think I'm going to place a table in each corner. And we're just using up wood like crazy here, so if we run out I apologize if we have to sit and wait for a chopping cycle to get more wood, but I think we should be okay. And you'll see they're still moving things. To destroy your scaffolding, I forgot to... Well, I'll show you how to destroy the scaffolding after we finish the roof. Let's see here. Did they place the next layer? Can't tell. And as you can see, I'm just I'm continuing concentrically and inwards. And we're almost finished with this roof. I am going to check my stocks one more time because I really don't want to overuse wheat. Okay. We have plenty of wheat. So as soon as this layer is placed... And remember, you always want to check what level you're on, and that'll work out fine. Another thing that I forgot to mention in earlier episodes is that anytime you can press the Z key, and here we go, and it will flatten every block on a level. This can be very, very useful for planning out your city, and it's a good thing to keep in mind. I probably should have mentioned it in the first episode, actually, because it's a very basic function that everyone should use and make use of. As you can see, we're placing tables here and there, and things are getting more back to where they need to be. I am going to check on, let's check on Matilda de la Porte and see if she's actually getting happier. And you can see that her happiness a moment ago was 0 out of 100, and now it's 2 out of 100. And they have not placed the next little bit of roof yet. Hopefully they'll get on that. 
I do have quite a queue going right now, so if it ever seems like your people aren't doing what you want them to do, it's because your queue is getting a little bit long in terms of the actions they can perform. What I would like to go over now is some of the military commands that you'll be interfacing with, and some useful tricks for your soldiers as well. Or a useful trick for your soldiers. You'll take a look here at your military panel, and obviously I showed you already how you can manually equip everyone. Stay away from the auto-equip button for the most part until later in the game when most of the enemies have been cleared off the map. But you have four commands here. You have assign as a guard, assign to a patrol, assign as a supervisor, and add soldier to group. Now I'm only going to go over these three right here as I don't think I've ever used the assign as a supervisor uh, button. I think that just makes it so the rest of the people that are unassigned follow him around. Don't quote me on it. Look it up for yourself because I'm not positive. I've never used it. So the assign as guard just means they walk around your city and they will attack anything that attacks another civilian. It takes them a moment though and they don't usually react as quickly as I would like. Sometimes they react far too late even though the enemy is right in front of them. The second command you're going to be looking at is assigned to patrol, and I'll show you how that works now. If you switch both people to a patrol, or one person to a patrol, you can right click anywhere on the map and add a patrol point, and you pick a person. I'm going to go with Edmund Lamar uh, Marinier, and I'm going to set his other patrol point over here. And now Marinier will wander between these two points, we'll see if he comes at the moment. They don't always occupy these points because they do get tired and they do need to sleep and eat, so they will abandon this post to fulfill their needs, if necessary. I also don't know how far out of town Marinier is right now, but you'll see shortly he will come and he will walk in between these two points. My guess is at the moment he's probably sleeping somewhere. So, we'll just wait on that and I'll show you that in a moment. Um, our roof is almost completed here, so I'm going to go back down to the third layer where we were laying down roof. And there's our last concentric ring right there. And then once that's in, we're going to come and place the capstone here in the corner, and your roof is completed. With oblong buildings, the process you may want to relegate to building as a square, so let's say you make an oval shaped building. I would still build the roof in a square pattern just to be safe. Um, roofs don't seem to like to work if you try and get creative with them. Uh, if you're more interested, you can definitely check out Caprantos' guide on the Towns Game Forum. He has some more roofing and building tips there. And Marinier's patrol point has vanished. How about that? Interestingly enough. So I'm going to redesignate that patrol point, just so you guys can see. So right click, set patrol point, and then you pick which citizen you want to walk that patrol. Hopefully, he comes around and shows you guys an example of that. Sometimes they can be a little iffy. I know this- there he is. So he's gonna eat, and hopefully he'll come to his post now. And we will see him... And there we are. You see, he'll walk directly between these two points. Oh, and we lost another civilian. Matilda de la Porte. Those damn froggies. I'll tell you what. From your log menu at any time, you can click on the person and it'll show you where they died. This is probably the result of the fact that, as I told you, be very careful when you have raw food barrels or raw food stockpiles. Your people will wander off everywhere to the point that most people don't even use these barrels. I just put them down to show you they work. I don't use them in a normal game. I avoid them like the plague because they get your people killed left and right as they run off to Antarctica and wherever else to finish and grab little pieces of meat that NPCs have killed. I am going to finish this roof here just to show you it works. There we are. We're going to place the capstone on there. We lost another civilian, but the tutorial is almost over, guys, so if you've hung with me through this entire thing, thank you very much. Thank you to all the contributors on the forums who I've read over the last couple weeks um, who taught me how to do this, and there you are. There's your first fully completed roof. It works with any roof model, and you just get to pick which graphic you like best. Now, another useful tip is once you have heroes showing up, you'll need a tavern. Well, I'm, you'll need a tavern to get heroes to show up. I said that in the reverse order of what I wanted to say it in. Unfortunately, I don't know if I have enough civilians right now for people to show up, but I will make a tavern just to show you that it does exist. Take this right here, and I'm not on the right lair, so you'll excuse me as I get to the right lair. And Kapowski. There we are. Oop, I deleted the tavern trying to destroy the mushroom bush. This pesky badger is going to occupy our tavern for the moment. He apparently is a badger with fondness for booze. And then what you'll do is, within your tavern, if you want to attract heroes, 
once you've got immigrants coming in and you've got enough rooms, you'll want to build a tavern. And in that tavern, you'll want to make rooms just like you did for your individual citizens. Those will attract, in turn, heroes will come and occupy those rooms. And let's see here. Oh, I said tavern room. My apologies, I clicked completely the wrong thing. If you want to build a tavern, it's right here. I was going to say, that doesn't look right. The graphic doesn't look right. It's the wrong color. There we are. And within here, you can say, designate a tavern room. Or, I'm sorry, it branches off. I am just not on my A-game today. So there we are. That would be a tavern room right there, and you would wall it off, and you would put a bed and some other things in here, and the hero will actually occupy this room. There are several ways you can police your kingdom, because the point of this game is it's a bit like Majesty, where the ultimate goal is to dig your way down into the dungeon, which exists underground in the lower layers, and then heroes come to your city and they try and clear that dungeon. What you want to do is some people like to set the entrance of their dungeon inside their tavern so that if monsters come out of it, they are automatically attacked by all the people in the tavern. Another alternative thing you could do is build a wall around it and put a door with a lock on it and only unlock it from time to time, but that tend to make, tends to make your heroes unhappy. I did digress a little bit from my military menu, and I apologize for that. I got excited about finishing off my building. You can assign your soldiers to groups, which means they will roll out together no matter what. So I'm going to show you how to do that. You click them here, and I'll assign them to group 1. Now when you go to group 1, you can set their behaviors. Their behaviors are, you can rename the group, you can set them as guards, which means they will act as guards together. They will always walk together everywhere. You can force them to patrol together. You can make them a boss around group. And what a boss around group does, from what I understand, is if you set them to boss around, they follow civilians around and they shout orders at them and it makes them work faster. I don't know if this feature is actually working yet. Um, it is quoted as on the list of features, but I don't know if it works. I haven't really messed around with it. Making my citizens unhappy means immigrants don't show up, and so that doesn't really seem to be the best course of action unless you really, really need to get things done. You can also choose to auto-equip everyone here, and you can also choose to disband the group entirely. That's more or less all the military commands you have, but I will show you a quick trick. Sometimes your heroes, for example, will be wandering around, and heroes, when they come to your city, will pick up things off the ground. They will steal from you, they will take weapons that are laying around, so these would be fair game right here. Somebody would probably come, and why did he put that? Oh, I forgot to manage those barrels individually. Um, what they'll do is if there's gear lying around, they'll equip it. But sometimes you want your heroes to equip better gear. Now, so I'm going to show you a little trick. This is a little advanced. But you're going to set your military to patrol group. And what you want to do is you can add a patrol point for group 1. There you are. And you'll notice this is within my tavern. The patrol group's going to come here. And I'll show you what you want to do just to equip heroes if you really want to try and force it. You can also use the patrol points and set them, say, up in this froggy area, which would actually help you clear out some of these hostels in the early game. What I have sometimes done when building a city is I will, I will give everyone armor, everyone weapons, assign them all to a group, and set them to patrol in an area that is full of froggies and just wipe, watch them wipe out the entire froggy culture. That tends to take care of the issue once and for all. I didn't do it for the sake of this tutorial, but I did want to explain it. It appears as though our patrol points have been deleted once again, so I'm going to re-add that so that I can show you this trick. And hopefully they show up very shortly. There they are. And when they get to the point that you want, you can do this. So this is... Emmeline Saint Sanson, and we're gonna take her and we're gonna tell her to unequip. And what she'll do is she'll drop all her gear right here in the tavern. And what that'll do is as heroes walk by that, they will pick up the gear, and it's a useful way to force people to equip if you can't get them to. And I'm not sure why he picked up those pants. Oh, he put them in the weapon rack. Okay, that's fine. He's hauling. And so I think for right now, that's a really good spot to end this tutorial. I can't think of too many more things that I want to cover. Maybe multi-level building, but I think that might be better tackled through a Let's Play than a tutorial. I feel like right now, I've given you guys all the skills you need to make your first successful settlement. Or at least get you rolling, remember? I just want to come back to certain points. Be careful about raw food. 
and raw food stockpiles because they will get your civilians into trouble. Remember that one rule and you can save yourself a lot of deaths. Another rule in closing that I'd like to say is equip all your citizens. I didn't do it in this in this tutorial, but most experienced players will equip every single person in their city with weapons and armor so that if they get caught unawares while hauling, they fight back at least and at least do some damage before they go down. Remember not to overplant because overplanting can lead to your starvation. And then, other than that, just have fun with it. Don't get frustrated. If you run into a brick wall, Google it. Use some Google Foo, use some Google Magic, and see if you can come across it. See if you can figure out a way in which to succumb the pro or uh, to defeat the problem without getting irritated. This game does have a lot of quirky things, and that I will freely admit. But I think deep down, if you enjoy games like Majesty, it is fun. And I definitely think it's worth a shot. So my name is Splattercat. Thank you for joining me on this tutorial series. If I do end up doing a Let's Play, I will absolutely annotate this video so you can jump straight from this video into my city building process in the first episode in my first series of the Towns Let's Play. I've had a lot of fun making this. Please do like, comment, or subscribe if you've enjoyed it. And I will see you in other videos. Thanks.